Thank you for your patience. I truly appreciate that. Welcome back to this week's, actually, it's the first of our series, in our spooky series for the month of October for our podcast. We are here. We are joined tonight by author, artist, and I think a business owner of some sort, uh, Miss Harlow Dean. Harlow, welcome to our podcast. Welcome to this week. We truly appreciate you. Spending your Saturday afternoon, actually, for you, it's evening. Yes, it is. Here with us yes. and sharing your I'm story. Happy There's my here. partner. There's my awesome. partner, Jay Tiger. Her name is Grizz. So, okay. Ms. Arlo, I know we had a conversation, uh, I think, uh, last week. Um, and I think we talked a little bit about what your posts are. We're going to talk about that tonight. We're going to share a little bit about that tonight. want to make sure sure we share the one reason why we're here tonight, which is your book, Plugged In to Paranormal. And I had to re-read the title because it wasn't plugged into, it's actually plugged in to Paranormal. Right. I like that. Yeah. A whole different meaning to it. Which your book can be found on Amazon and the link is in your bio. For those of you who are watching this, those of you watching the replay, please make sure you follow uh, at Harlow Dane. You can find her Amazon link there, as well as her Etsy shop. We're going to be talking about that a little bit later as well. Um, on your profile, it says that uh, you're connecting with spirit without fear. Not a lot of people can do that. And I had to do with a lot of my younger years and growing up. And I, I think when you tell people you've had paranormal experiences, they tend to think, okay, one or two things. But for me, it's been a lifelong continuing process. Mm-hmm. Really, the paranormal experiences and my creativity have been the two strongest aspects of my life. And it's been just a continual experience. Do you find that um, your art actually mirrors your experiences? Yeah. Has uh, it always been that way? It has because I had basically divine intervention when I was a kid because my dad was an alcoholic and I had to run to get the neighbor one night. And I was going to jump the fence between the yards. Yeah. I was just a little kid. I was like 11 years old and in pajamas, you know, and I, I it was a wooden fence, not huge, but still something considerable to jump, jump, jump in the middle of the night, sorry. And uh, all of a sudden, before I could do that, I heard a voice, both in my head and on the night air, very calm, just said, no, go around. You don't see that well, it might hurt yourself. And, and I, you know, I looked around expecting to see somebody, and nobody was there. And wow. I knew from, from that point on, I knew I wasn't alone. So, so for me, it started off being very supportive and caring and it was really a foundation for my belief. Was it a familiar voice to you? No, I'd never heard anything like it before. Wow. Um, you know, in reading my notes and looking through some of your um, your posts on, on Instagram, uh, I made this question, I had this question, um, and my question is this, is there anyone else in your family that has spoken about similar experiences. Uh, and the reason why I ask that is because it is really, it's believed that um, being a sensitive, being uh, someone who is um, connecting or attuned with the spirit, a lot of times it is generational. Yeah. It is passed down. It's very true. Uh, the women in my family all had, you know, similar experiences especially my aunt she was probably the strongest sensitive in the family i mean i remember you saying that on our phone yeah. call yeah when we, when we were growing up i mean they used to do ouija board and seances all with you know white candles and prayers of protection and it was fun it was nothing bad about it but they were yeah you know in in a in an earlier time uh also when i was young we had a ouija board uh, it was meant more for fun, and it was meant for um, laughs and, and entertaining ourselves on those nights when we were 
locked in the house and right. not being able to go out because of the rain and storm or whatever. But um, I think there was a lot of uh, misunderstanding. There was a lot of misconception about this tool. Right. It's called now. And in um, intention, intention is everything. Intention is everything. We didn't know that, you know. Right. And it there is a system about opening up and also closing. Yeah. And when when steps are failed and steps are missed, um, it is evident that it affects persons who were using this Ouija board. I've heard so many stories about it. You know. Mm -hmm. Um. We had one as a kid. When I was growing up, uh, my brother, and my sister, and myself, and we didn't know how to play with it. We messed around with it. <laughs> we, we moved the planchette by ourselves and laughed and had a good time. And we asked the worst questions like teenagers were. Yeah. And, you know, it's just one of those things that we didn't understand how serious this group could be. Well, we had supervision of the best kind. You know, my aunt was very spiritual and very protective, so I never felt anything negative at all. Yeah. And I haven't used one. I haven't used the board for years. Um, speaking of it being generational, I, I've said this before in another podcast, but uh, there was a time, I just made a post about it yesterday, where um, I'd seen a white tall figure walking in the backyard. Uh, I didn't tell anybody about it. Uh, the, that night, my sons who live on another island, they were here. And my oldest son had seen this same white tall figure mm -hmm. standing at our back door. Right. And uh, the next morning, I went to talk to him to see how he was doing. Asked him how he slept as it was our first night. And he says, "I have to tell you something, Dad. I don't think you're gonna believe me." And he told me what he saw and he described it, and I got the chills because he was describing the exact figure that I saw walking yeah. in the yard. When it's a shared experience, it's really impressive. Yeah. yeah. As your light dims in the room. <laughs> Thank you. <Jim. laughs> so obviously you said you've grown up with having these experiences. So it's not something that you're fearful of. It's not something that um, you hesitate uh, no. with questions no. and stuff like that. It, then, yeah. It gave me a lot of faith and because it was not ever evil for me. It was very protective and fun. And uh, actually the only dark I experienced was from people, you know, from my home experience and that thing. I would go outside and sit under the, the moon and stars and feel unconditional love. And it just, mm -hmm. the dark became very supportive and, and good for me rather than evil. Mm -hmm. And so if you can go into being open without that fear, you don't have these preconceptions notions of evil or anything bad happening. I think a lot of us is just that fear of not knowing, you know? I think yeah. that's, that's what makes everybody so skeptical and makes everybody so well, fearful. And, and that in paranormal shows and horror movies and true, even even true. some religious dogma. So it's there's a lot. True. True. So let's get into your book, Plug In to Paranormal. What what prompted you? What was the catalyst for you to, to write this book? Well, it's it's a lifetime of experiences. And the reason I did it was because I had a visitation dream from a friend of mine who had passed. And it was, wow. I say visitation because it was extremely vivid colors and so much in symbolic, even in some of the things that it showed. Mm -hmm. And she came and I, don't believe her feet were touching the ground and she showed up in a very beautiful dress with you know, just a beaming smile and said she had a gift for me and she handed me a book it had my name on it all different colors of the rainbow and i just i knew that's what i was supposed to do because wow. she and I, I had talked when she was alive and i had told her some of my experiences and she was a, you know an eager listener but she'd never had any experiences so it was really interesting that she's the one that kind of turned me on to doing it Wow, so it was almost a divine intervention kind of thing. Yep. That's awesome. I mean, were you an were you an artist first? Or? I started. Yeah, I started writing and drawing when I was about eleven. If pretty much everything happened for me then, it's like once I heard the voice 
and I, I wanted to express my awe and wonder for the magic of the universe. And so I started writing and drawing, and that was my, my way to do it. Now, I know you also did, uh, if not all, all um, a lot of the artwork for your book. Um, yeah, it's all, my, it's all my artwork. And it's, it's uh, all posted on your Instagram. And I went through it, and I was like, wow. Each one has a different meaning, a multiple meaning. Yeah. But only the person who actually did the artwork would understand. Right. So I see, I remember seeing one, there was a, a gentleman that looked like a magician. He's got a, a, a cape over his head. And I don't know what he is, a sorcerer of some sort. In your book, is it written in? third person is it written in your experiences it's How first, is it written in your book? yeah it's a first person book it's really the only way i can see to do it because i collected all these experiences like hoarding treasure because they were all things i cherished all these magical moments so i remember them as if they just happened still and wow. there's so many nuances there's just so many nuances as far as what i was seeing what i was feeling what unknowable knowing Thing I got downloaded from it, just trying to capture all of it. Mm -hmm. Wow. I don't know. You know, I look back at some of my experiences that I've had personally, and I try and remember certain details. And a lot of times I can't. There are a few that stick with me, mm -hmm. and the details are very clear. I've been asked a couple of times before to write a book, but English is not a strong point for me so i don't know if i could do that yeah i don't know I, if anybody would be interested in reading my experiences you know? i think that's just kind of was my purpose it was to experience all these things and at the same time develop my writing craft so i yeah. could describe them would you like to share one of your stories from the book i know you told me about one in a phone call yeah what is i can tell you that one that was a pretty good one because i yeah. worked I worked for about 10 years at a place in Florida where I actually was separate from the main operation. I did glass etching and sandblasting. I was upstairs by myself for most of the time. And the first few years, there would be little things that happened. They would be subtle. So, you know, you kind of just push them off and don't think too much about it. But it kind of kept adding up. And then other people would experience them too once in a while. And someone else was working up there with me once in a while. and there would be little sounds or there'd be footsteps behind you and so one day when i was working by myself i just said aloud to the room okay if, if there's something really here do something that i make sure that i know you're here and that i it's not out of the corner of my eye something definitive mm -hmm. and then i went back to what i was doing i was setting up a plaque for etching and i had to walk over and get some mask, which is basically a stencil to put on this plaque I was about to etch. And as I came back to my desk, I just stopped in my tracks because the pen that had been lying on the side of the table was now standing straight up on end on the desk. And it just was such a profound moment and a million different things went through my head. First, it was like, I didn't quite believe it. That I thought maybe somebody was messing with me, even though I knew nobody else was up there. I still kind of looked around real quick to make sure. And then I thought, well, I wish somebody was here to see it with me because this is phenomenal. Yeah. And, th and then it went to, well, it's like, I know I'm going to forget this. I'm going to, as time passes, I'll question if it really happened or not. And that may be sad so i thought well let me take my phone out and snap a picture it won't prove anything to anybody else but i'll remember mm -hmm. and then i won't question it so i did and it was still standing there through all of that and so i i thanked the spirit whoever it was and i'm like well i, I really need to use this pen to finish my work <laughs> and i tried later to stand it on the desk and i it took me three tries because it was an old battered desk with globs of paint and you know dents in it mm -hmm. So it was really a phenomenal experience. And that, Jeez, that, picture, that picture is in the book. It was an old, old flip phone, you know, it was a while back. Right, right, right. But still to capture something like that? Yeah. I mean, I don't know if I'd use the word profound, 
I think I would be throwing stuff at the desk, <laughs> throwing stuff at the pen. But that's um, just it. I've always been so fascinated. When something like that happens, I just stop what I'm doing and all my focus goes on it. It's like you're almost in a bubble with energy and the rest of the world is just going on doing its thing and you're separate. That's how it always feels for me. Yeah. Uh, do you feel like time stands yes. still when you see something like that? Absolutely. So do I. So do I. I feel like the rest of the world is shut out. Yeah. And time is just, the present is just now. Exactly. You know, and uh, it, it's happened to me several times. Uh, I used to work at the airport on Mali, and my shift was late at night because I had a, another job that worked in the morning and during the day. And I would work in the evenings to about 2 o'clock at night. And the airport that uh, I worked at on Mali, the only one anyway, um, is is actually believed to be haunted. Mm -hmm. uh, it is uh, built next to some burial grounds um, towards the end of the runway. And there were many times when we would see lights and torches at the end of the runway. And right. we drive up to the end of the runway. There's nothing there. Wow. There's nobody there. But it's just the chills. And mm -hmm. It's the people that I was with and I didn't understand that I was sensitive to stuff like that. Right. Uh, I, I thought, hey, this is just by chance. And it's a coincidence I've seen stuff like this. Uh -huh. But it really wasn't a coincidence. It was yes. setting me up over yep. the years to where I am today. Um, I've actually been doing some readings for a few people in the last couple of weeks. And there are times when, when time just stands still. And I'm in like this tunnel. Right. And all I can see is what's here. Mm -hmm. Can't see anything else. Can't hear anything else. Yeah, I absolutely relate. Yeah, yeah. That's oof. okay. Good. I'm glad I'm not the only one that <laughs> experiences that. Not yeah. at all. I mean, all my life I thought it was just I was an observer. Like I was lucky to see yes. all these the magic of the universe. These all these moments, yes. and I collected yes. them. It never occurred to me that I even had abilities. It was just a natural thing for me. And then just recently, a medium told me that had I chosen that path, I would have been a physical medium. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Physical mediums are good. Physical mediums actually are a little bit more um, intense than your regular, I don't, I don't know what the proper term is, but a, a medium who just connects with spirits. Mm -hmm. I used to have some interesting experience. See, when I was younger, it would affect me physically. Like I was actually thrown across a room mm -hmm. and I've gone into a bookstore, used bookstore and touched a book. And it kind of, I used to call it uh, like paranormal jet lag because mm -hmm. it would almost render me like a zombie for a few minutes. It would yeah. take me out of myself and it would take a couple minutes to get back into it. You know, and so that totally made sense when she said I was a physical medium. You know what you were doing, yeah? You were probably time traveling. I don't know about that. <laughs> you probably were. Your spirit was probably time traveling to feel that exhaustion, that, that um, drained energy. It's like it takes all this energy for spirits to connect with us. Yeah. Same thing with us. It takes a lot of energy for us to connect with their side. It goes both ways. Yeah. You know, this, this is a random question, and I'm asking you because... I know you understand uh, abilities and spiritual gifts. There are recently many, many people who have been in the spiritual community who is kind of well-known, who has been doing tarot reading and doing mediumship and psychic abilities and doing readings with that. And a lot of them have stopped recently mm. saying that, that there is a negative attachment or something negative going on in their life. There was a couple of YouTubers I know, my partner Grizz does as well, that stopped doing tarot, daily tarot reading. Really? Stopped her channel because she said that um, there was something just totally negative about that. I've ne never really, I mean, I've had experiences that other people would say was scary, that they would be scared by. But to me, it's like, okay, maybe here I, I pissed off a spirit, or maybe here it's someone that's confused that is just trying to reach out really strongly and doesn't know, you know, it's, it's all in your perception. Mm -hmm. I've never, 
never felt there was any, I've never felt anything demonic. I've never had an attachment. I've never felt in danger. I think a lot of it too is the faith in my own guides to keep me safe because I've also had some experiences there where I was protected. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting. I'll tell you what my viewpoint is. And and the reason why I'll tell you what my opinion is is because it's something that came to me in a dream. We are all called to be a particular type of being, whether it be a light worker, whether it be a, someone who connects with spirits, whether it be one, ones that help others heal, we are called to do some type of work. A lot of us are called to give guidance through tarot or different types of tools. Um, and using our abilities as far as us being sensitive about it, all of us are called to do some kind of work here. There are now there's the time now where people are being tested people in the spiritual community they're being tested we're getting ready i believe for a very a much grander battle on the spirit field something that we haven't experienced before something we haven't seen before Mm -hmm. and it's almost like the universe is weeding out all of those who would not affect the battle in a more positive way it's for their protection as well as for building i guess a a stronger grander uh spiritual army to fight what i guess is coming you know it's a weeding out so to speak when i when i told this to someone else in the spiritual community she's like i've never thought about that before I said, well, it did come to me in a dream, and it came to me in two different nights. It was like the dream started one night. I got up. I didn't understand. I journaled about it. The next night, I went back to, you know, when I went back to bed, it like, it's like it picked up from that second part and went and continued the dream. It's interesting. And I was like, hmm, that, that means we're ready for a battle. Because really, our battle is with the spirit world. The spiritual world, you know, not of the physical. That's that's where the battle's going to be. That's where it's going to matter. That's so, interesting. It's my opinion. It was what I dreamt of a couple of nights. I journaled, and I really been feeling yeah. that. And I've been uh-huh. kind of talking a lot about that to other people in the community. And some of them are like, "Wow, I never thought about that." It's very interesting. You know? But interesting. getting off topic. <laughs> getting off topic. We're here to talk about your book. We're going to talk about the book now. Plugged into paranormal. Is it something that uh, you said is a first person? So it's a pretty easy read then. Yeah, it's not, not a huge book. It's, oh, okay. It's, okay. I mean, it, it's not you know ex- exclusively just my experiences. There's some regular life stuff in there too, but there are a lot of experiences. And I think the, the takeaway really is that inter- everything is interconnected and people don't need as as fascinating as it is to go to these abandoned places and haunted places at night you don't need to do that to have to have an experience it doesn't have to be in the dark and i'd like to see more people be aware of that and to try just most of my experiences were just during the day yeah yeah you just have to kind of believe in the possibility and try to put your fear aside i i don't know if it's more of the belief because spirits are all around us all the time they don't yeah. need to sleep they don't need to eat they don't need exactly to rest, yeah. you know so everything time is different is, for them yeah yeah everything is different ghost energy guides everything is around us all the time yeah. not just yeah. in an abandoned and haunted place not just at two in the mo- at two in the morning you know <laughs> yeah. i i have one particular spirit guide that i feel with me a lot um she is my my daughter i lost her about 28 years ago i mm-hmm. feel her when she's around me feel her pulling on my room. yeah uh, i've seen her once before in my house so you know i'm not afraid of it i understand who she is i uh-huh. know who she is and the energy yeah. is different i can tell when the energy is right. not right i had a similar experience too yeah. i was walking to work one morning and it was still dark out 
I used to leave pretty early in the morning and I was just kind of heading towards the bus and I was enjoying seeing the, you know, a family of raccoons come back from foraging and just in a good mood. And suddenly I just felt this presence next to me and it was just unconditional love. And it just was amazing. And I felt compelled to just call it joy because that's what it represented for me. And I felt that figure with me for years. Has she made herself known to you? Yes. And she feel her energy. Very, very warm energy. Very, um, very mother. Mm -hmm. Protective. Very protective. Yeah, I've always felt extremely protected. Yeah. Can I ask, are you from the United States originally? Yeah, I'm from California. Your family, are they from the United States? Originally? Yeah, everybody's from, Cal well, mostly from California. It was, they started I, back in Missouri and Oklahoma. My dad was in New Mexico. Picking up on an energy that is not, she is speaking a different language. She's speaking in French. Ah, that's interesting. It's connected to you. Hmm. So I asked if you were originally from America. From okay. America. That I'm not aware of. That's interesting. I don't understand what she's saying. I, I know the language is French. Hmm. It's connected to you. I have to give that one. And, and you know, thought. that's the thing too. For us as sensitives, for us as mediums, uh, there are times when people or spirits we connect with may not speak English. They may speak a different language. Right. But for us who are very, very sensitive to it, you actually understand what this people are, this, this spirit is saying. Mm -hmm. And I found that when my one of my spirit guys, my first spirit guy I met, my number one, she is from China. She's a relative from China, from the Qi dynasty. She speaks Mandarin. Oh, interesting. Interesting. At first, I didn't understand her until I understood the connection, and now I understand mm -hmm. it. Even though she speaks in Mandarin, and I don't speak Mandarin. Right. You know, um, but if it's an, a spirit that is connected to us, maybe, uh, we are able to understand the sensitives. As for me, I don't have a connection with this person, so I don't understand what she is saying, but the energy I am feeling is right. very much. Um, motherly and very protective. I'd be interested for you to take a look and maybe ask your own about that. Yeah, that's uh, that's interesting. I I have no idea at this point, but it's it's, it's very interesting. I don't want to say Canadian, but it's a language. <laughs> it's, it's it's French, and I don't understand it. Right. I wouldn't understand it either. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's talk about your Etsy shop. Uh, rat Shadow, Rat Shadow Apparel dot Etsy dot com. That is right. your Etsy store. Right. Tell me about that. Tell us about that. Mostly uh, teas uh, with Halloween and paranormal and some horror graphics. It's just kind of a fun side thing for me to do. With some of my art is on the teas, so it was a way to to do some of my artwork and get them out there more. Is that the um, black tees that I see in your Instagram? Right. There's four of them I think I saw. Yeah, there's there's hundreds in the shop. But oh, yeah. cool. Okay, okay we're going to check that out. Etsy. Rat Shadow Apparel dot Etsy dot com. Make sure we put that out in our post uh, after we're done here. But okay. um, I, I do see that you're also a rat lover rat yeah runner? yes i've had pet rats for over probably like 25 years i mean i've had i've had a lot of them because they only live two or three years but oh. and i've had some phenomenal spiritual experiences with them they're like, like personality wise they're like little dogs they learn their names and come when they're called and they bond with people very very loving and i've, I've seen especially in passing or right before passing i've seen the light connecting us 
and uh, it's it's been phenomenal in fact the very first one we ever had i was with him as he passed and i felt his spirit rise up and just dance away with joy Whoa. now i did see three names dante logan and De Niro. those were the last boys i had unfortunately the last of them logan just passed about a month oh, ago my. and he's oh, the my. one i i had to take him in and have him euthanized he was old and had some medical issues oh no and they they had given him his tranquilizer to let him be sedated and i was petting him and that's when i saw this ray of light connecting us and it was like it wasn't a, you know a small little flimsy light it was like a two by four of light mm. solid from from him to me and i knew it was the love we shared and i felt him say wow. i know what's going on and i'm okay with it and so they just put him on <laughs> on his way and he was very peaceful and it was a another profound experience when you can experience that with an animal especially you know there's they have souls and they're connected to us and it's it's pretty special a lot of people don't believe that animals have souls. I am one of them that believes that they do. They absolutely do. Yeah. Uh, and then I think I had spoken to um, an animal psychic, an animal medium, mm -hmm. uh, about two weeks ago. And, and she was sharing me, sharing with me some stories about, just like how you said that, that when humans have the connection with that, that pet or that animal um it is such a close connection that when you see your this animal pass on that you actually see a light the yeah the, the animal. Mm -hmm. so i um i had to euthanize a dog um back when i was early 30s and she was one of my favorite dogs she was my ex-girlfriend's dog and she had cancer and when i took her to the vet to get her youth and i it was very hard yeah. for me. it is and i didn't i guess i wasn't looking for it at the time i didn't i didn't know it but i've gone back to that house uh, my ex-girlfriend's house to visit with her parents because they're very good friends of mine and i, I can feel her energy in the house. You yeah. Know? If you feel the dog's energy in the house. Yeah. And they have no pet. Right. So, interesting. Are you, do you have any other um, rats now that you are raising? No, I don't at the time. It's, I have an empty cage right now and it's hard to see, I'll tell you. I miss them a lot. It's like a piece is missing without them. And it's one of those where you, when you have that connection, you just can't fill the cage up with just any other no. rat. No. no I get it totally when the get time it. is right it'll it'll happen if the time is right i'm sure i totally i totally get it guys tonight we are talking to miss harlow dean she's an artist she's a writer uh we're talking about her book and some also some other paranormal experiences that we both had her book is plugged in to power through the paranormal you can find that on Amazon, uh, and I believe the link is in her bio. Please make sure to check it out. Her bio while you're there, please make sure to give her a follow. She's a terrific artist. Thank you. Terrific artist. Uh, I don't even think I can make a stick figure look that good, but man, you're a terrific <laughs> artist. Uh, yeah. I do want to talk about another book I did see that I think we didn't really talk about the other the other day when we were talking on the phone, there's another book uh, that you're a part of and you participated oh, in. Right. Um, yeah, that's Dark Dark Village. Yeah. Dark Village. Can you yeah. tell us about that? That is a horror anthology. It is fiction. So I I used to write a lot of horror fiction. So this one is uh, a collection of stories by a lot of different artists, writers. And mine is actually about a paranormal investigator. Oh, wow. So I just tried to use some of my own thoughts and experiences a little bit, and it's kind of a fun story. So it's a collection of It stories. is a collection of by a bunch of different writers. But that just came out last month, I believe. So it, and there's so something special that happened with that. I, I can't remember uh, seeing it on your post, but was it something that was uh, featured in, in a program on a TV show? 
Not to my knowledge. It hasn't been out that long. Okay. But uh, in fact, your book hasn't has. How long has your book your book been out? Plugged it, into paranormal. It's actually been reissued it, and originally it had the title um, lessons from a large white rat it, but no one was actually finding it by that title so I changed it and then I updated it and added some more to it so reissued it's been out a couple of months well, so it's fairly fairly new. yeah um, and I hope that is going well for you I mean there are a lot of people as you can tell now who love things of the paranormal you know um, yeah it's interesting interesting topic question obviously you probably watch a series or tv shows or youtubers that do things of the paranormal nature do you have any favorites you know i if i was going to pick one i'd say kindred spirits because they think outside the box mm -hmm. and they don't label everything demonic they're open to going in and trying different things and bringing in a shaman or whoever they need to depending on the circumstance so i like their work yeah there's not many shows that actually have the intention of helping exactly there are a lot of shows who are going in with the intention of becoming famous oh yeah it's all about that kind of bugs oh yeah I kind of bugs me. It's TV. You know? That's the way it's going to go. It's a lot of it is scripted, yeah. and you know, it has an agenda. Yeah. How about YouTube? You you watch any YouTubers? Uh, I like to watch Katrina Weedman. Her show is. Oh yeah, good. she's good. Yeah, when she investigates with Heather, it's a lot of fun, and they get Michelle Bellinger on there, and she's she's a good psychic. Uh, and she's the one that does these blind readings. Yeah, yeah, where she's yeah. off just, the property, right? She's away from the property to the university. Yeah, I like well, that. Well, actually, that's what my friend and I have been doing. I don't know if you, we just did our first podcast on Thursday, and she does remote viewing also. So, we oh, cool. went, um, we went to the Whaley house, and she was reading that. Because I had oh, an experience. That's a, that's a scary place you went there. I saw quite, quite a bit of stuff there. <laughs> Quickly, what's the podcast called? Um, right now, it's just called the Haunted Home Series. We just did our first one. We'll be doing a few more just for the month of October. After that, we have a lot of different things planned, maybe remote viewing the Bermuda Triangle. Oh, wow. And, and uh, the pyramids. So even Atlantis, so we have a lot of plans for that. Very cool. Have you ever heard of the Hill House? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, any uh, any opinions about I, that place? I really don't have any experience with it, so I really can't give much of an opinion. I've been to the Whaley House, so I could I could talk about that one. I, I unfortunately I, I came into this game really late, so I've been to California many 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 times, mm -hmm. but I come to this game very late, so I haven't been to any of these places that are uh, considered paranormal or haunted in any way. But uh, I have connected with, so um, there are a couple of people I've connected with this past month. Um, uh, I like to watch Chelsea Davies, of course, everybody does. But um, uh, uh, there are a couple more that uh, do YouTuber, uh, Paranormal Investigation. There is one that I was watching uh, about a week and a half ago and we recently hooked up on uh connected on instagram and mm -hmm. it was um gosh ghost ghost gang paranormal i believe is the name um and there are two women that okay. were investigating this property it was a cabin and quick story behind that uh, the gentleman that owned the cabin, lived in the cabin, was actually um, decapitated right. by um, this woman who was angry. And she was angry at other reasons, at other people. But this guy was a victim. And these two women were doing an investigation. They were watching the video, and I got 
for connection. Now, this video has already been played and edited and now put up on YouTube. So I like a week later that I'm watching this and I'm watching the video and I started to connect with this woman. And she, she started to tell me her story. This woman is a very negative enemy. I ended up messaging the medium on Instagram and I told her what I was connect who I was connecting with during the video and everything I told her about she confirmed she validated everything mm -hmm. uh, about this woman and about the victim and about the things that they're experiencing and I did tell her I said you guys cannot go back there that she's waiting for you to go back there you cannot go back there Interesting. you will, will not make it out there make it out wow. of there untouched and so, so the owner of the channel, um, the Ghost Gang Channel, she messaged me and said, I got your message. I don't think we're going to go back. <laughs> it was just an ugly, bad thing, you know? Yeah. So I guess for me, that's where a lot of my abilities come in is um, being able to sense things and energies through even the screen yeah there's a name for it i just don't know what it is i don't either but it's pretty <laughs> handy <laughs> it can be very handy i don't know if it's handy <laughs> you know it can be inconvenient at times that's you know. true <laughs> uh, if you had to choose one story from your book what would be your favorite uh, uh well the pen on the desk was probably my favorite um and then probably the one with the rat was my next. Um, also, let's see. One of the weirdest was uh, in the used bookstore. That was a, a store in Northern California. My my cousin was taking me to her favorite bookstore, and kind of she went her way, and I went mine. I was looking through the horror section, and I wasn't finding too much. And I just kind of glanced around, and I, I found a book that was something I knew was actually a bit collective and might be more valuable in time. So, it, but as soon as I, my hand took it off the shelf, I was just overcome by this wave of what seemed really dark energy. And I couldn't put it back, back on the shelf fast enough. And then after that, I have experienced that paranormal jet lag and I just wandered to the shop for about five minutes and I was just out of it, just not myself at all. And my cousin said she saw me and called to me and I didn't even acknowledge her at all. And it took a few minutes to walk around and walk it off and get back to myself. It's amazing how it can just hit you out of nowhere and just coming in contact with another energy can really be pretty amazing. Especially the energy is stronger than yours. Mm -hmm. and, it's, and of course, it's unexpected. You know? Yeah, it's never expected. <laughs> I, I think a lot of times, I guess, our intentions are that we want to use our abilities to help others. Like me. Yeah. I want to use whatever abilities I have to help others so that they don't have to experience or go through things unnecessary. Right. And then I have to remember sometimes people need to go through things unnecessarily because there is a bigger lesson behind that. You know, exactly. That That's what I wouldn't be able to teach. Exactly. That's, that's one of the things that all these experiences showed me, that there are patterns in your life that need to be addressed. Sometimes it takes you a while to see it clearly, but they're there. Yeah, exactly. Yep. What, what's the next step for Harlow? Are we expecting a second book from you? Um, I don't have one really in the works just yet. I pretty much talked about all my experiences. I'm starting off on a few, and right now we're doing the podcast. and. We'll see what happens from there. You know, it'd be cool. And but I tell you what would be really cool. If somehow your, your podcast was one of those where you would invite guests up to share their experiences and you made a collection of them. Yeah. Well, our first episode, we, like I said, went to the Whaley House and a lady came on that felt very connected to one of the spirits that we encountered. And she actually was very helpful in moving her along. Yeah, about that. Yeah. Have you ever had any any experience 
doing that yourself? No, no, I don't. that's not something I would even attempt. I, I, I did it once. I don't want to do it again. Really? Yeah, I, it was when I still still learning how to use it. Still yeah. learning how to step myself. I didn't know how to build boundaries or step boundaries. And it was just, it, it wasn't good. It was hungry. It was scared. It was sleeping every night. It was, uh, my mentor actually helped me out. This is what we got to do. You got pretty you muffled, it. It. muffled there. It's hard to understand uh, you. I don't want to do that. Yeah. That's something that my friend doesn't want to pass it on messages. Yeah. I don't want to do that kind of thing. Yeah, your your voice is all muffled. I didn't catch hardly any of that. Oh, my voice is cutting off. That is the other thing. There's a lot of messages. Carlos, you can hear me. Any last messages for our viewers and our community? I didn't catch that. Yeah, your volume is just, I can't, it comes out really, there you go. It was really muffled. I, I didn't catch any any of that last story. Oh, I got cut off. Can you hear me? On and off. How about now? That's better. Okay. Uh, I apologize for that. Uh, any last messages for our community, for our viewers? Anything else you'd like us to know about? Uh, we talked about your rat apparel, <laughs> rat shadow apparel dot sc dot com, which is where you find the shirts, and I'll, I'll post some of that on my Instagram stories. Also, your book can be found on Amazon. Plugged in to the paranormal. Right. Uh, links are all in your bio. Is there anything else you'd like? to share with us anything else coming up for you besides your podcast which is the haunted home series right any that's that's okay. pretty much it just i'd like everybody to try and take a few quiet moments now and then and listen to their inner voices and see what happens it doesn't take much a few minutes here and there and it's just amazing what can happen yeah i believe that especially in our busy world we have to remember to take that time out yeah to <laughs> refocus just reground, yep. regroup, and help call back. If you get ba balanced and deal better with the day, yep, absolutely. I agree. Totally agree with you. Um, I make it a point in the mornings to send out any intention, uh, any energies, any good juju, and then in the evenings, I make it a mm -hmm. point to call back all my energies. Yep. Set back anything that's not mine. You know? <laughs> yeah, for sure. We don't want any of that. Carla, I want to appreciate uh, you spending your Saturday evening with us and sharing your stories and your book with us. Uh, I want to also thank you for being patient oh, sure. uh, with our setup tonight. And thank you for uh, just being who you are and sharing your artwork, sharing your, your gift of writing. And um, at the end of our podcast, I usually ask our guests, we have our, our community, some of the ladies you see in our group, are in comments right now, um, where we just kind of have a group community chat room, and it's not something that goes off every five seconds or so, but we share a lot of information there. We encourage each other there. Um, we share a lot of happy birthdays to so-and-so. I'll be sharing some stuff in that chat group that I won't be showing on my Instagram feed, but I do have a couple of videos of some orbs caught on a ring video. Uh, from a good friend of mine she sent me. She's actually part of the community as well. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to ask if you'd be okay if we added you in that community tonight. Sure, that's fine. Cool. I'll, I'll make sure I do that, introduce you to the rest of our group. Everybody pretty much knows I've been sending out all of the um, your posts as well. So thank you for allowing us to take your time tonight and sharing. Sure, I appreciate it. I enjoyed it. Thank you for being a part of tonight. So I, I would like to Check out your podcast. And, guys, again, at Harlow Dane, check out her Etsy shop. Her book is on Amazon as well. And the book is very affordable. It's totally under $10. Right. Uh, check that out. Yeah. For sure. 
Yeah, there, it's an ebook form too. I think it's like two ninety nine. So, and if you have Kindle Unlimited, it's free. So, right, right. Lots of options. Else right. Yeah. Right. But again, and Arl, thank you again for tonight. I really appreciate your time. I really appreciate you sharing your story with us. My pleasure. And we'll, we'll talk to you right. soon. That sounds good. And thank you to everybody for joining tonight, Grizz, Miss Shonda, and Tia. I appreciate you being here. Thank you guys and a while. All right. Good night.